So today we have another cobalt battery pack to look at on the bench. And this is model number KB24006. So this is the 40 volt max, 72 watt hour. So this is a two amp hour pack. And just like on a previous video we did on cobalt, the charger is not coming on at all. And I shared that in the very first video on the cobalt batteries I did as well. So this is just my second time looking at the cobalt batteries and charger. But this belongs to someone I work with. And I just wanted to take a look at it for them. And I was interested what the issue was with this 40 volt max pack. 10 volts is way too low for this pack, so we're going to have to open it up and see what's going on. Just boosting this pack is not going to get it going. So let's get our T10 security bit. We're going to take the pack apart. It's just four of the T10 security screws. A spudger tool will help here get to the snaps, and we're in just like that. And right off, we do see some discoloration on one cell. But the rest of them actually look pretty good. Let's look a little deeper here. We do see our 40 amp fuse here. And that wire was touching there. But the connection is on the same point. So I guess no big deal. But we do see some corrosion. Perhaps from that cell leakage here. So we do have some corrosion to clean up and we'll check. But if we got a lot of these cells with low voltage, it's probably not worth even trying to salvage. But you know, if we wanted to, this 40 amp fuse is really fine for a four amp hour pack. You know, for most loads that is. This one in particular just goes to a weed eater. So I know that he just has this for his weed eaters. Let's look at these cells. And the one here that we know looks bad. If we just take our Cowwitz meter here and check. Oh yeah, 0.1 volt. If we have more than one that low, it's probably not worth repairing the pack. Yeah, another one low. Another one low. Alright, we finally got some life there. 2.8, they probably survived. 2.8, more likely survivors here that if nothing else might be fine for flashlight batteries in the future, but another 2.8. 0.5, nope. 2.6, and it's probably okay. 0.6, and yeah, 0.6, so nope. It's a no-go. So typically I would just recycle this pack and it's probably not worth time to repair I'm going to remove this NTC here just get it off the silicone here these connectors are in there really good I think they're glued on the back side I'm just going to push gently, not to short out any two pins, just to push in gently. That one come off, but these two here are being extra stubborn. I'm going to have to cut this glue. There we go. There we go, our board's off. And our nickel strips or plates look in really good shape. So I would try to even reuse these if I can get them off without destroying them. But the way they've already got this set up to be so easily to convert this to a 2P pack, I think I want to try it with these orange cells I have here. I'm just going to go ahead and remove this board right quick. And we do see some corrosion here. I want to point that out. We'll have to clean this up and see if we can reuse this strip.
So here I'm just taking the screws out so I can separate this into two pack halves, if you will. And if we pull this foam off and the wires out of their little catches, this should open up now that we got those two screws removed that connects the two. So let's go ahead and remove those wires out of the clips. I want to take time here to show you the screen printing on this BMS board. Hard to see, but if you look, you can see ground and B1 all the way through B5. And then we have, I think, common and CDK for either communication. So B6 all the way to B9, then B+, plus, which would be our tent sale. So that's pretty straightforward. And of course, we have our NTC that I pulled off. The little thermistor for um, the battery pack temperature monitor. So I did a real quick pin out here. You probably can't even read it, but I, I did this just for me before I go much further taking this pack apart. I will try to draw that up a lot neater and share it with you later in the video. So these orange cells I've already went through and tested. And if I can get these tabs off, I say just see if we can do this as a 2P or 4 amp hour nominal size pack. And just see if we can get our friend's weeder back going. I think I'm going to take out three of these wires from the connectors and that's going to help me a lot with separating this and getting the wires and connectors out of the way. One down. You just have to lift this little tab, the little catch here, and then pull it out. Two down. One more to go. Sometimes you can reach in and push the little catch down and a pull out. And sometimes on these little white connectors, I find it easier just to lift up real gently on that little catch and just pull it out. But So here we go. Look how easy we can get to this center part of the battery. And about 50% of these strips is brand new. So I do have all new nickel strip. If I want to, I can put it on there. And it's a little bit thinner, so it'll be even easier to spot well, to be honest. So I'm going to show the worst case scenario and just try to put them back. I think these are probably close to 0.20, which is really tough on spot welding when the surfaces aren't perfect. And I have some 0.15 that will be a lot easier to put on if I do need to. But I'm just going to go across and take these off and try to straighten them up some as I go. I've already documented what wires went where to help me in putting this back together. Because when we get done, it is going to be bare bones. Nothing but just a cell holder sitting there and the parts around it. So... That's the main thing to me about a job like this is document well. In this case, I also have a video going I can look back at, but you don't always have that. So we had two screws that held the pack halves together to each other. And then we also have one screw one way and one the other to hold the end caps of the halves themselves. And just like that, pop right out. I'm just going to continue on moving these strips. And I do like using these little flat needle nose pliers that I have. They just do a good job with leverage and it seems to be less destructive. And I just have a lot better luck using these and putting the strips back. You know, if you have to, just replace all the strips, but we'll see what we can do here. I am going to take time to mark these halves. That way, if something does confuse me about the way when I go to put these back, it'll make sense. I'll probably do the same thing with these strips here. I'll mark black across the silver part, and I got silver to write on the black part of the plastic end cap. And I'll just go through and make lines in different spots. And even though I do know which color goes where, if I do get confused, then this will make even more sense to me. So after removing all those strips, we should be able to get into the half. And we see this one cell is in very bad shape. So once again, a cobalt 40 volt battery shows us that it's not wise to just jump or boost a pack that we don't know much about. That first video had a battery pack that was one of the worst I've ever seen. And several viewers commented that it looked like dynamite. And it really did. But um, one thing to point out here too is these, these end caps have plus and minus on there. And that helps a lot when you're putting these back together. So that's really neat. They did a good job on that part. And there we go with our plus and minuses lined up. And we'll make sure that our end caps line up with each other. If you'll see there, there's a male and like female 
indention there where they fit together in a lock and it should snap yep just like that we have one screw on each side caddy corner from each other and there we go just that quick one half ready to put back i am going to take time here to clean up this corrosion i'll probably speed the video up here but I do want to show you that I did clean this corrosion up so it just doesn't magically get better on video. So at least you'll see here that I used just a brush and alcohol. When the corrosion was real bad, I did put a little bit of uh, white vinegar on it, by the way, and let it soak. And then I made sure I cleaned it up very, very well with high percentage isopropyl alcohol. So I think I'm going to be able to use just about every bit of this. We'll see how it goes. Let's repopulate our cells in our second half here. And I really like these little battery holders a lot. The little end caps go together very well. And the plus and minus makes it easy to verify that you have it in the right orientation. I don't know if you can see that the way the screws are. How they have to mate with each other. Yep, like so. So it won't go the other way around. Then, of course, our other two uh, screw studs you seen there were for the two pack halves to go together later. Then the other side. And there we go. I think we're ready to start putting the strips on it. It looks like a mess, but as anything else, we'll just take it one strip at a time. And guys, I have redrawn this, so hopefully you can see it a lot better on video. And maybe this makes sense here. I'll add some cell data on the screen as well, but how it goes from B- minus all the way to B+, plus as it steps through. With our 40 amp fuse being the very most plus in our negative or our ground. So we just got to put our strips together, which would be the middle here. And I have those number wise and wire color wise showing and they go for example like brown goes to b1 so it'll be down to b1 at the bottom of the pinout respectively and we go through and that's our b1 b2 then we got our b3 reading and then b4 b5 b6 7 8 9 and 10 to give our 40 volts here on our b plus and goes out through our fuse so it's pretty simple if you want to take a screenshot of that in case it helps you with yours go ahead now i have marked these strips so if we line this up here we should be on the white strip here nope i gotta turn it around it should be the brown yep the way i have this is turned this way and I definitely want to start testing with them to see if my spot welder is strong enough to do these without them being in perfect shape. And we'll just keep going like this with the gray and etc. So I'm going to start off using this BI FRC. I do like this spot welder, but I never did take time to beef up the, the solder traces on the back and the front the way I should have. But it typically does good on quick welds, but we'll see how it does on this long run of spot welds. I'm just using a 5200 milliamp hour 60C 3S pack here. I am going to put on one of these little cheap battery meters. And this is set to actually beep when um, the cells get below 2.7 volts. So if I let one get that low, it'll start beeping on me. But I am trying to monitor it the whole time it's in use. So even though I like this BIFRC spot welder, it does have one negative feature about it. And that's when you see this little light blink, the actual green LED blink on the board, that's when it fires. So it's not picking up my contact points. It's just a time thing. So sometimes it's going to catch you and it's going to arc bad because you're just putting your, your probes up here, your tips on the strip, and you're not really positioned well. So that one didn't stick real well. I pulled it right off. So let's go up a little bit on the power. It's probably going to take maximum. But let's try one more time before we go maximum. I 
Yeah, that hit pretty hard, but I wasn't quite ready for it. Yep. Felt pretty good on that one. I saw a little bit of smoke coming off the board that time. I'm feeling here for heat, but I'm just going to keep using it. And I do have a backup, a board I like a little bit better. If this one don't hold up, I'm just going to try to put it through a test here. I want you to be able to see this little meter, see what I'm seeing. It's amazing how well these spot welders do with so little battery usage, but this little cheap scrolling meter don't show up too well on camera a little bit more smoke coming out keep going to see how it holds up that's the only thing about the way this thing's timed it makes me kind of push down hard on the strip and i don't get to relax like i i like to because i'm not sure about the time where I'll try to show in the video later. I like how I can kind of push down to make sure I got a real good firm contact. And then I can back off and relax just a little at an angle. And I, I just feel like that gives me the best spot well. Because you, re, you have a little bit of resistance there, but it is touching. So it's kind of an art to it. You want the touch and make a good connection from strip to sail. But at the same time, you don't want to push too hard where the where the tips give you such a low resistance that it it don't give you a good burn spot welder still holding up i'm doing a lot more spot welds than i normally would per sale of course as mentioned the sails are used so their surface is not perfect even though i have cleaned them up some and of course the strip i'm trying to use here is used and i'm trying to just make sure i get it even if i'm doing one tip at a time i'm trying to make sure i get them all But before I do this next strip, I'm going to clean a little bit more with my little grinding pin. So a little Dremel or even a small grinding pin like this one with this bigger rotary tip. I'll just go through and hit the high points and make it smooth. And it doesn't take long to do it. But I wish I would have did a better job beforehand because now I got to make sure I don't clean off my, my marks as I clean up the cells after I grind them. But... So once again, this is how we're going. We're just gonna keep working away at it, just like so. So I have gone all the way through and got the halves all the way complete with the parallel connections. I wanna bring out this new spot welder board, but the reason I got it out is before I could finish with that half, you see it finally did blow the trace I was talking about. That's where it was heating up. And if I would have built that up more, it actually would have lasted and i can probably get this one going i like keeping one of these around the little bifrc does work really well so i'll show you this one here you set it up for what battery type you have and i just use the same battery and i haven't charged it since i started like i say it doesn't actually take a lot of battery it's such a quick pulse it does a really good job it does come with these cheaper leads but they do work for the price it actually does come with them so i can't complain i i just go ahead and use them so we cut it on i'll show you here real quick you set your battery which i have a 60c and it's a 5.2 amp hour or 5200 so we set it for the very first 1 to 10 amp hour and then when it comes to the c rating of the battery we go all the way up to 50 to 60c and then that allows us to go up on all of our what they call gears or i just call it power or setting we can go from one all the way to six but if you watch this if, if i did have a bigger battery say amp hour wise 
it would flash and fault out and say, I can't run it at that level with that big a battery. It knows that the board can't take it if you go on up higher. If you go down lower or if you drop down to a different C rating, you see it's fine. But then we go up and once again, we fault out. It looks like what that's telling us anyway. If you see, we can't even reach to a battery size that this board will say it, it can't use it. It's just too powerful and to blow the MOSFETs off this board. So I do like the intelligence built into this one. And so far, it's actually worked probably better than any spot weld I've had, especially for this price range, because this is in the sub $30 price range, even with the leads. So I did have to make up the battery leads for it, and that's it. So this is what we have so far, and I can actually bend this. I'm happy with the way the connections feel when I tug on them. So I just need to bend this over and put the screws in it. And I like the way that design is because once we put these screws in, I really feel good about that mechanical pressure on that connection. I don't think that'll give you any trouble there. So now we get to try out this newer spot welder as we move on here. And see how we got it laid out here like so. So it looks like that goes here. Nope. Nope, the fuse actually go there. Yep. The fuse will go up there on the plus. Let's set this up with a quick clamp. I did have to grind these a little bit, so I'm just going to clean them up real well. I've already cleaned up the strips. But I do like how it senses the connection and I can back off and just release just a little bit. As you see the leads jump here, you see it's pretty strong. Oh yeah. Gonna continue around and try to hit several spots because the, the battery itself is not perfectly level. Again, with a brand new strip and a brand new battery, pretty much two good solid wells on each tab and you're good. I'm having to make sure I push down here and then I push with the leads and release just a little. So that's got that one really, really good. We're just going to keep on going. I've had several spot welders, including making my own with supercapacitors one time for just doing small jobs. I didn't create that one for doing anything large like this. It would drive you crazy. It was just meant to charge up and just use it for a few spot welds. But I will say this setup here is probably my favorite out of any of them that I've used so far. It's quick and easy and the battery just holds up so well. As we see here, we're going to put our fuse up here like our drawing shows us. Be careful not letting anything touch at this moment. Yep, make sure we're still on. And we're at our highest setting at this point. It's just working out better for us with these, um, these used strips. And, and like I say, these are thick. These are... These are point two oh, I'm sure of it. And by the way, I do have some small spot welders that they won't even do point two oh at all. Point one oh is about as high as you want to go. We can go ahead and mount our connector board back on here. Try 
try to get this wire routed a little bit better. This side looks good. Now let's work on the other side. This will be where our ground wire comes up and connects, like so. Bam. I like it. Two more like this will be good to go. And I do have a video that I've done in the past and it's called lithium battery FAQ number one. It just answers some questions that I get asked very frequently. And one thing I do take time to show on that video is how I do test my cells for capacity and internal resistance. So I didn't show that on these orange cells but that video if you're interested i'll put a link to it up here in the corner and maybe at the end of this video if you're interested and i always go through and check cells before i use them or some that i might take out that's used i might just do it for my own flashlights or whatever right but anyway i talk about it in that video that i go through and do a capacity check and a, um internal resistance check and things of that nature So overall, I've been very impressed with this little spot welder. If you've been looking at one like this or had any questions about it, I would recommend it. It's actually a great little spot welder. And we did a tremendous amount of spot welds and the battery's still holding up. Now it's just time to test and reassemble. There we go, 37.5 volts. So we should be right at 3.7 volts average on each one. And there we are, 3.7. There we go. Going on around. Yep. Yep. It's good. Building it up. Yep. Yep. And yep. There we go. We just got to put these three wires back in our connectors here. I hope you can see that that's the little catch of course we want to make sure we put our catch back facing up on the catch on the plastic of the connector so it'll latch we'll push it in and make sure it won't pull back out and we're golden we just got one more here this is the gray one for our b8 and there we go and that way our bms has our monitoring Go ahead and hook these back up. I don't think I'm going to re-glue these. They fit in there and snap in pretty good. I am going to tape down the little thermistor. There we go. We're showing about half charge. That's correct. Awesome. We got to put our wires back in our little hooks. Put our foam pad across. And I am going to put some Kapton tape instead of re-gluing this little thermistor just so it holds it in place. If we have any um, battery temp issues that'll shut the pack down. For good measure here, we'll put some more Kapton and secure these as well. And I think I want to put some on this positive side of the battery here. There we go. Yep, I like that. 
see here I gotta put this plate yeah the plates gotta go back on first once that lines up then the holes will line up yep just like that and there we go that looks nice it's all lined up good put our top half back on put our four T10 security screws back in probably one of the easier large packs that I've worked on honestly is actually a pretty good design and I really like how the two amp hour can easily be made into four amp hour as long as your fuse rating is enough and let's see if uh, it'll register it on the charger here it should and there we go we'll let this charge up and we'll come back and capacity test it so here we are all charged up there we go I have this pretty much set up we don't want to go below 27 volts if you see there I have it set for instead of time discharge just to a cutoff of 27 volts and we're going to run it to a 2 amp draw and one of the reasons is probably 3 amps is about as high as I can go with this tester anyway because this is such a high voltage 40 volts so this will be over 80 watts so turn it on here like this and it's at 40 volts so we're good we started off with 41 point i think one volts so those cells do not fully charge on the cobalt charger so we definitely won't get full amp hour out of this but if we get over 3.3 to 3.5 with these cells i'll be happy and honestly anything over two amp hour is a gain but we definitely want to go over two because if we don't go over two then that means one of my parallel connections fail. So we kind of checking both things here at once. So after testing for quite some time, we have over 2,800 milliamp hours. So I'm happy about that. Our parallel connections are definitely good. And here we go, an hour and 39 minutes of running and over 3,300 milliamp hours. So I'm happy with that. Uh, if these were a better quality cell, it probably would have been up to like 3,800. But um, we only started off with 4.1 volts, and I cut it off at 2.7 per cell, so nominally. So, yeah. So, yeah, I think that's going to get his wheel eater back going. At the end of this video, I'll have an update from him to make sure before I even post the video, because I don't have his wheel eater. But here is that diagram, if you're interested. And yeah, that really wasn't a bad job, and it was interesting, and I enjoyed fooling with it because I wanted to see if I could actually make it double capacity. Cobalt did make it neat on these lower capacity battery packs, and I think that's, that's really awesome. So I'll give you one more shot here with the cell and BMS wiring here if you're interested. And i show you here that I marked the heavy gauge wire, if it makes sense, with the fuse with the red up top and the ground black. And of course the TGGT is I designated there for the fiberglass wire or glass cloth wire. I'm definitely going to modify this for my friend. It's a modified to 4 amp hour. And the reason I didn't put like 3.5 is because, well, it's been harder to make this to a 3.5. So it's nominally 4.0. It might not ever truly reach that. But So at the end of this video, I want to give you an update. My friend said his weeder has been working very well, and he was appreciative to get that back going without having to buy a new weeder, especially this was more of the end of the season when I got it going for him. So I know I'm a little late posting this, but I wanted to get his information as well as take time to edit the video. So I hope you found this video helpful today. If you did, please like, share, and subscribe. I'm going to have some links down in the video description of some tools and things I find interesting and helpful on my workbench to do jobs like this. And if you find them helpful, any link you click on helps support the channel, and I greatly appreciate it. So thanks so much for watching, and God bless.